Hiya there, I'm doing another history book review this evening. So uh, this one I'm going to be doing is about uh, the book called In Search of a Kingdom by Lawrence Burgreen and it's read by Michael Page. Now this book um, I had on Audible, recently finished um, listening to this one as well, uh, is roughly 13 and a half hours, um, but it's a fantastic book. and. This author, I've only recently sort of discovered this author. He's got a couple of other other fantastic works as well, which I'm going to have a little look at with you as well. Um, but yeah, this book, just to give you a brief summary about what it is, um, the, the title is In Search of a Kingdom, Francis Drake, Elizabeth I, and the Perilous Birth of the British Empire. And what he's, what he's um, conveying in this book is it's mainly focused on the character of Francis Drake, who is the notorious um, Chuck, whatever label you want on it, on it, him. He's a patriot, he's a pirate, he's a slaver, he's a colonizer, what have you. Um, but really, a true, the true story about what this man's significance was uh, on the birth of the, the British Empire, um, as he was at the time during Elizabethan England, his relationship with um, Elizabeth I and the court as well, uh, being their, their privateer, and also his uh, circumnavigation of the, um, of the world as well, which um, is obviously takes the majority of the book up, uh, and his, his sort of impact as well then, um, not only on the British Empire and it's and, and it's, and it's the sort of the, the the start of the British Empire coming up in the 1600s, but also the showing the sort of vulnerabilities of the Spanish Empire, which at the time was uh, all powerful or effectively all powerful, um, but as he showed in the book was more so just a, paper, a bit of a paper tiger. They couldn't, you know, they couldn't defend their um, uh, their, tra their treasure lines and their tra and their um, treasure ships but anyways just to sort of touch on um, a couple of the key things in in order so it, it delves into the um, the early years of Francis Drake uh, early years uh, coming from the West Country in Devon you know the guy was only what was he five foot five you know ginger hair really sort of straight and a direct direct person but a very decisive leader leader uh, definitely a leader of men as well um, and this guy, initially in the first couple of years, did what he did to make money, um, was a slaver, um, encountered in his early, in his early sort of voyages with um, another one of his compatriots by the name of um, John Hawkins, or Jack Hawkins, I think it is, um, the sort of, in, you know, uh, when, when they are coming into contact with the Spanish in the New World, you know, he really developed a distaste, one, for slave trade, slave trading, and two, uh, for, two for Catholicism, and three, for Spanish rule. And I think this, those three, three things really did stay with him after his early years. He gave up slaving, albeit it doesn't really say whether he actually sort of gave the money that he made profiting from slavery back, but, you know, not many people did back in those days, of course. You know, we shouldn't really sort of, you know, try to, sort of project our 21st century um, expectations onto somebody uh, who just lived that in that time. But anyways, after that, you know, managed to sort of carry favour with the English court at the time. Um, and, you know, certainly Elizabeth, Elizabeth Tudor's court, you know, for the best will, for the most best will in the world, she was, it was never a secure reign. She was always under threat and uh, conspiracies. She's always under sort of, um, Plots to assass plots for assassination, overthrow the government, whether that would be religious or just Spanish overthrowing the French, you know, put it, or maybe put Mary Queen of Scots on the throne. So really, the um, the court was really vulnerable, and he offered an opportunity to one put England on the map in terms of circumnavigating the globe, making sure that they could raid tra uh, Spanish treasure ships on the way, um, which he did. You know, he, uh, he he landed all over the Caribbean, all over South America, and came up on the Pacific, uh, the Pacific um, Ocean, especially um, near California and the Northwest Territories as well, or would be the Northwest Territories um, of today's United States. 
which I found was quite interesting. And you know, for some of the some of the uh, indigenous people they encountered, you know, they'd had negative um, interactions with Europeans previously. You know, so I'd understandably met with hostility. Other ones, which uh, I can't remember the name of the tribe in um, the Northwest Territories in California, but they were they actually tried to treat, treat him like a god, uh, or treated him like an honorary member, a chief of, 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 the, of the tribe, which I thought was really interesting. Um, but, you know, what his, uh, there's a, but what the book does as well, is it gives you a lot of sort of um, seeds around, not just uh, Drake, but of other people and what they're doing at the same time as well, such as Walter Raleigh. Um, you're looking at Philip II, who is the King of Spain, you know, quite a pious man, who was married, um, of course, to Elizabeth's sister, um, Mary, Mary Tudor before she died and you know his sort of determination to force England into you know if not back into the fold of Catholicism and back you know within playing the Spanish Empire's game you know to try and get them to bring them to heel more or less and it is culminating even sort of it does sort of bring up this retrospectively um, going to culminate in the 1588 um, uh, Armada, Spanish Armada, um, in which case, you know, Drake would play a massive part in that as well, uh, to combat the Spanish uh, the Spanish Navy uh, with the fire ships in the English Channel. Um, but, you know, like it does say, described in the book, the Spanish pretty much cut their own throat as well. You know, they had a perfectly good original plan, but then tried to overcomplicate it by picking up, you know, another army, which was... Um, which was actually in the Low Countries, uh, fighting the Dutch at the time. So unnecessarily over complication. Of course, everyone knows the history from, you know, being a kid, the way the play is part and the, the Protestant wind, as they call it, you know, annihilated the, um, the Spanish Armada. Um, but yeah, I mean, but another, another character which I found very interesting in this, um, and they do mention him from time to time, but you only get a bit of a peripheral, uh, a peripheral sort of take on this on this guy was John D, uh, who is Elizabeth's astrologer, and this guy uh, you hear in the sort of conspiracy theory realms this guy was somebody like a bit of a was he a clairvoyant or you know this guy you know was was really sort of leading Elizabeth's events and uh, using astrology and his and his and his cutting edge science as he was at the time. To try and sort of guide, um, guide Elizabeth's decision makings, and um, I just find him a very, very fascinating character. Considering that you know he had an absolutely massive library of books, apparently had 2,000, 2000 books alone, and that was even in the 1600s, which is uh, you know absolutely astounding. And you know the guy was a very, very influential person. But you know uh, more, more, more so. This book is it is about Francis Drake and his impact. Um, his impact on the uh, on the birth of the British Empire, which was substantial, I would say. So, I think you know, looking at this, I'm not going to go too far into. It. I think really, this is a, a new author that I've come across, um, Lawrence Burgreen. Uh, he has written quite a few other um, notes sort of voyage themes books. One on Magellan, and one on Columbus as well, which I highly recommend you pick up. But I'm going to have a quick look on Amazon in a second just to see how much the, this book is retailing for. So, Kindle is $14.99. Um, I had it on audiobook, so I've had one credit through that for $8.99 a month, so that is far cheaper than paying £27 for it. The hardcover is $25 and the paperback is $15. So, really, the best option I would say would be to go to Audible. If you've subscribed or you've signed up, brilliant. Use your credit on that, or at least put on your wish list as well. But let's have a little look to see what other books that um, this Lawrence Burgreen has um, written. So, yeah, Columbus, The Four Voyages, that one I've got on my wish list. And Over the Edge of the World, which is Magellan's terrifying circumnavigation of the globe. And there is quite a lot of um, overlap between the Magellan book and this book as well, where... Drake is retreading the path set by Magellan uh, decades before where he circumnavigated the globe, but unfortunately died en route um, 
coming back to Europe. So, but fortunately Drake didn't. He did come back, and um, although he tried to settle, um, was made a, a member of a uh, member of Parliament as well. I think this is the type of guy that he was years at sea, and despised uh, despised the land and all the sort of in trends, the infighting and the politic in uh, that was going on um, in England at the time. So, you know. But yeah, anyways, a fantastic um, author, i got to say. I was really well written, followed it very, very well. Um, even for somebody who didn't have, who doesn't have a, a deep understanding of Elizabethan history, I think this would be um, a book that you would consider to pick up because ultimately this is a book about a guy who had a fundamental uh, impact on the birth of an empire. And, you know, it's not often you see a book about a guy even back then, who, you know, and it is quite sort of a bit of a hot topic at the moment, somebody who was a slaver who, you know, we wouldn't sort of ascribe our um, modern day values to, but yet the guy gave gave up and sort of went against everything that had sort of made him his money originally, which was slaving, you know, raiding the, raiding the Spanish treasure ships. I mean, the guy absolutely loved to steal and um, I can probably imagine that the guy would have, you know, would have been a, some sort of hedge funder today or w w walked in Wall Street or in something like that because, you know, the, his le leadership of men, his intellect, his connections, um, the guy was probably a, su a ready-made success, really. And um, it was a very interesting book. Um, I think overall, I would uh, add to the ones that have been written by Lawrence Burgreen any book by David Starkey about Elizabeth in England. I know there's obviously, you know, some some voices with David Starkey that they don't like the guy. It's not about the guy himself. Read the work, the work, and his work in particular. It's absolutely fantastic. And I know he's sort of not everyone's cup of tea. He is quite up himself. But ultimately, the guy is good at what he does. He presents history fantastically. And I would rather have his books and criticise them, but not have them at all. Um, so yeah, there's another author you can have a look at as well. But overall, I mean, really surprised by how good this book was, to be honest with you. Um, I'm going to give this one four out of five stars. And if you do, if you do enjoy the book and you do pick it up, give me a comment below um, if you wouldn't mind liking the video. Uh, it's definitely